I would like to point out that the British Sign Language Interpretation Proceedings is available to watch on the Parliament Live TV. BSL interpretation will also be available for the Prime Minister's statement following PMQs. I now call Dr Jamie Wallace. Well, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, may I start by wishing you and all members a Happy New Year. Thanks to the heroic efforts of our vaccination programme and people coming forward up and down the country, uh, we managed to ensure that families uh, could still celebrate Christmas, with over 34 million people now boosted. And I want to take the opportunity to say that anybody who has not yet done so should come forward and get boosted now. Uh, Mr Speaker, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others in addition to my duties in this House. I shall have further such meeting later today. Dr Jim. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, Sadiq Khan's TfL in Tatters and the Welsh Labour Nationalist Coalition in Cardiff Bay, an unfunded devolved disaster. Mr Speaker, does the Prime Minister agree with me that the great British public don't need to look back at the last UK Labour government to see what this opposition's answer to all our problems is, which is to bang at the doors of the Treasury demanding that the taxpayer bail them out of their own ineptitude and incompetence? Mr Speaker, it's not just Labour's record in London or in Wales. Every Labour government in history since the Second World War has left office with unemployment higher than when they came in. And that's because only Conservatives can be trusted to deliver on the economy and on, people's, on the people's priorities. And that is why, Mr Speaker, this country now, thanks to the policies we have pursued, has the fastest economic growth in the G7. Welcome to the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, Angela Rayner. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and a Happy New Year to you and the rest of the House. Mr Speaker, over the Christmas break, the world lost a giant in the fight of equality and human rights, the great Desmond Tutu. And I would like to offer my condolences to his family and to the people of South Africa. And I'd also like to thank all of those key workers who have kept our essential services running over the festive period, particularly all those staff and volunteers working at vaccination sites and our amazing NHS staff working incredibly hard with incredibly stretched circumstances. But I know we're going to come on to that after PMQs with the Prime Minister. And I'd also like to thank the formidable Sue Gray, who I know has been busier than Santa over the festive period. <laughs> Mr Speaker, in October, in October, the Prime Minister said that fears about inflation were unfounded. But working people across the country are starting the new year facing rising bills and ballooning prices. So how did he get it so wrong? Yeah. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, uh, what the government has been, uh, and I, of course I said no such thing, because inflation is always something uh, that, we, that, we have to be, uh, that we have to be careful uh, about. But what we are doing, Mr Speaker, is, making, is making, sure, making sure that we protect the people of this country throughout what is unquestionably going to be a difficult period. And that's why uh, we are ensuring that we've lifted the living wage uh, by record sums, uh, Mr Speaker. We make sure people have uh, cold weather payments, uh, making sure that they have the, uh, the warm homes discount, all the other protections, the £500 million uh, fund that we put in uh, to help local councils uh, look after people uh, through what will be a, a difficult period. Uh, but the most important thing we can do to look after people during this very difficult time, uh, Mr Speaker, is to ensure that we take the balanced and proportionate approach uh, that we are uh, to ensure that we are able to keep our country and our society going, Mr Speaker, and uh, that is exactly what we are doing. And uh, that is why we doubled down on the booster programme, and that is why we are sticking with Plan B, Mr Speaker. And that's the right approach for the country. Angela Rayner. Mr Speaker, inflation is about to hit 6%. That's the highest rate since the early 90s, when the Conservatives have been in power for over a decade. Mad in their sleaze with a divided party. A Prime Minister losing the support of his backbenchers and governing shambolically. And a Labour Party, Mr Speaker, who is ready to take over and provide... 
for Britain with a better future. Camilla stop, Mr Speaker. The Prime Minister promised wage rises would offset inflation. They haven't and they won't. Millions of British workers now face a further pay cut and his Chancellor is handing them a tax hike. What will the Prime Minister do to get a grip of this? Uh, Mr Speaker, I I know that she... Uh, It is great to be here with the the Right Honourable uh, Lady, the Shadow Secretary of State, for the future of work. We know the future of the job that she has in mind. Uh, But I wish wish her well. I wish her well. Uh, But what we are focused on, what we are focused on, Mr Speaker, is delivering jobs for the British people. And and it is a quite extraordinary thing uh, that there are now record numbers of people in work, Mr Speaker. 420,000 more than there were before the pandemic began, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, We have youth unemployment at a record low, Mr Speaker. And never let it be forgotten uh, that when Omicron Omicron hit this country, uh, Mr Speaker, what was their instinctive response? They said, yep, that's right, Mr Speaker. They said they needed a roadmap, that we needed a roadmap to lockdown. If we listened to them, we wouldn't have anybody working at all, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I've heard on the grapevine there might be a vacancy for Prime Minister soon, so maybe I should have aspirations. The Prime Minister pretends it's not his fault. He blames the global forces, he blames the market. Mr Speaker, we're an aspirational party. Maybe the Prime Minister needs to be more aspirational for this country. But, Mr Speaker... The Prime Minister has made political choices that have led us into this place. His government has failed to invest in long-term energy security. His government decided to let gas storages collapse. His government let the energy market run out of control. 27 energy companies have gone bust in the last year. And now household bills are going through the roof. Or as the money-saving expert Martin Lewis put it, there will be a seismic hit on energy bills. Can't the Prime Minister see what's happening yet again? Working families are picking up the tab for his incompetence. Well, Mr Speaker, she talks, she talks about energy. I think the House will agree she's got a lot more energy than the current leader of the, uh, of the, uh, of the opposition. And, I, and I, I, I welcome her, uh, her point, because actually what the government is doing is supporting people throughout the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, 2.2 million people supported with the Warm Homes uh, discount, Mr Speaker, worth £140 uh, per week, which we introduced. Uh, pensioners supported uh, with the £300 winter fuel payments, uh, Mr Speaker. Speaker, cold, cold weather payments worth £25 a week for four million people up and down the country, Mr. Speaker. That is what we are. That is what we are doing, Mr. Speaker, and that is on top of everything we're doing to support uh, people on low incomes cutting uh, taxes for the, those on universal credit, increasing, increasing the living wage, £1,000 more for everybody on the living wage, up record sums. And Mr Speaker, let me just remind the House of the fundamental difference between that party and this government. And they, they, would have, they would have kept us in lockdown in July, Mr Speaker. Uh, when, Omicron, when Omicron hit, they were calling for further restrictions. We've been, that's right, Mr Speaker. We've been able to keep this country moving and keep the economy growing and keep the money coming into people's pockets, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I'll tell you what this Prime Minister is doing. He's increasing taxes to the hard-working people of this country. That's what he's doing. That's what he didn't promise in his manifesto, but that's what he's doing to the people. And I quote, Mr Speaker... The poorest households spend three times more on their income on household energy bills than the richest households spend. VAT on energy bills makes gas and electricity more expensive. Not my words, Mr Speaker, but the words of the Prime Minister himself. When energy bills are going to be hiked again in April, any decent government would find a way to help British families. Even the Tory backbenchers have finally accepted Labour's call to cut VAT on energy bills. So will he finally stand up to his Chancellor and do the same? 
Mr. Speaker, let me remind because she wasn't obviously listening to the previous answer. Uh, let me let me remind her the warm homes discount already. 2.2 million people supported to the tune of 140 pounds a week. Pensioners supported uh, with 300 pounds uh, through the winter fuel payment. Uh, the 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 cold weather payments for four million people. And she now they now have the effrontery, Mr. Speaker, having campaigned, and she did too, I think. Didn't she? Yes. I think. Yes. Oh yes, she campaigned to remain in the EU. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes, she did. Uh, they now have the bare-faced cheek to come to this, con- uh, to this to this House of Commons and say that they want to cut VAT on fuel, when everybody knows, and he did too, Mr. Speaker. Everybody knows full well it would be absolutely impossible if they were to do what Labour would do and go back into the EU, remain aligned with the EU single market. That is the objective of the Labour Party. They can't be trusted on Brexit, Mr. Speaker, and they can't be trusted on the economy. So, Prime Minister, how's it going? Are you okay? <laughs> The Prime Minister and his Chancellor have presided over economic mismanagement, low growth and neglect of our public services. And their resolution to fix this, whacking more taxes on working people. Combine the tax rise with soaring energy prices and the average family faces a hit of a £1,200 This is an iceberg, Mr Speaker, right ahead. So will he finally stop and change course? Order, order. We started the new year not in the way we left the last one. You did give me an assurance we were going to try and calm down. So if we can, it will be helpful. Angela Rayner. Mr Speaker, £1,200 hit right away. So will he finally stop and change course, or will he plough on towards what will be a disaster for thousands of families. Uh, Mr Speaker, as a direct result of what we've already done on universal credit, a single mother with two kids is £1,200 better off. Mr. Speaker, as a result of what we've done with the living wage, Mr. Speaker, introduced by this Conservative government, then never let it be, never let it be forgotten. Uh, everybody on the living wage has seen another thousand uh, pounds in their income every year, Mr. Speaker. But, the, but the, that's not the point. The fundamental, and we will continue to look after people throughout the pandemic. But the fundamental point is that because of the steps the government has taken because of the tough decisions we've taken, because of the balanced and the proportionate approach that we've taken to COVID. We've been able to keep this country open, keep our economy moving more open than any other comparable economy in Europe. And they know it, Mr Speaker, and they opposed it every step of the way. And that's why people are seeing increases in employment and increases in their pay packets as well. Mr Speaker, this Prime Minister always gives with one hand and takes away with the other. Under this Prime Minister, the country is worse off. Prices for everyday goods are soaring out of control. Hard-earned savings will be hit and the wages of working people won't go as far. Inflation isn't an economic theory, it has serious consequences for people's lives. We need serious solutions, Mr Speaker, to stop people falling into poverty or debt. Instead, Mr Speaker, we have this Prime Minister and his incompetent leadership. And every time we are faced with a challenge, he denies there's a problem. He tries to laugh it off. He looks for someone else to blame. So can I suggest to the Prime Minister, it's not about brushing your hair, it's about brushing up on your act. Does he accept his incompetence is taking our country backwards and costing our country dear? No, Mr Speaker. What I, what I tell the House and tell the country is that Labour incompetence has ruined this country time and time again, and, and there has never 
never been a Labour government that has left office with unemployment lower than when they came in. And what is her answer, Mr Speaker, to the energy crisis? It is to nationalise our, our energy. Uh, it was, in fact, Labour's failure to invest in uh, supply over, over a decade or more uh, that reduced our ability uh, to have uh, cheaper, uh, cleaner energy, Mr Speaker. We are rectifying that. We're taking the tough decisions that this country needs for the long term. And it's because we've taken those tough decisions, Mr Speaker, uh, because we've taken the balanced and proportionate approach uh, that we have, that they oppose every step of the way, that we have youth unemployment at a record low. We have 420,000 more people in jobs now than there were before the pandemic began. And, Mr Speaker, we not only have the op most open uh, society and economy in Europe, but we also have the fastest economic growth in the G7, uh, completely contrary to what she has just said, Mr Speaker. And that is because of our stable, balanced and proportionate approach. And, and when, when, never let it be forgotten, when Omicron, when Omicron presented itself, what did they go for? They reached for the lever of more restrictions. They said lockdown, Mr Speaker. We said boost. They carp from the sidelines. We get on with the job. You want more? You won't get more at this rate, will you? Mr Penrose has been waiting patiently. Why do you not want to hear him? Because I do. John Penrose.